What the hell is even that? Welcome back to Clownfish. Today we have a special edition to share with you as we'll be looking at times where folks stand up and fight back against wokeness. I'm not gonna do that. Starting with this reporter who refuses to use a guest's preferred pronouns. Thank you for telling me your pronouns. I use correct grammar. As always, stick around to the end for the recap, this week's woke news and much, much more. Uh, good afternoon to you, Shivani. Good afternoon, Julia. Thanks. You know my pronouns are they, them. How are you doing? Yeah. Um, thank you for telling me your pronouns. I use correct grammar. So the only, only thing I would need to refer you to is to your face would be you. But I'm, I'm not being rude. You can choose your pronouns. You can choose what you want to call yourself. But you don't, have a, you don't get to require me to use incorrect grammar and factually incorrect things. You're not a plural. You're a, you're a, you're a one person. And you're a, you're a female person, so I will use she and her. Thank you very much. Do what you like, I guess. Well, there you are. You didn't need to tell me then, did you? Maybe I'm just making sure people know in case they're watching and they want to re refer to me respectfully. Is it disrespectful for me to use correct factual grammar? It's not incorrect or unfactual grammar to use singular they them pronouns for an individual. But we're here to talk about the cast review. Yeah, but but you but you chose but you chose to bring it up. You chose to use the incorrect pronouns for me. I I'm chose to use the it. correct pronouns for a single woman who is appearing on my show. I'm not a single woman, though. I'm a very special non-binary trans person, as you just pointed out. It's the part where that's my problem. Now, let me know what you all think in the comments, but I'm always happy to see when people stick to their beliefs instead of playing along with others' delusion. The worst part here, if you rewind the clip, is that the host got corrected about pronouns when she didn't even use any in the introduction. And next up, we have Jordan Peterson giving us his take on why he's not obligated to follow preferred pronouns. You cited freedom of speech in that. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> well, well, I'm very glad that I've no, you get my, my point. Speech. You get my point. It's like you're, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But you're you, exercising you your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think more power to you, as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Now, I'd argue most people agree that the right to free speech should trump the right to not be offended. Because after all, isn't there always going to be something to be offended by? Jordan Peterson broke it down best. You could turn around and argue that not allowing free speech triggers you or offends you. I'm just glad we have some folks brave enough to push back with logic and reasoning. Meanwhile, some folks take a more humorous route when it comes to pushing back against the woke ideology. Our next two clips feature a man who pretends to identify as a camera and a woman who pretends to identify as a cat in order to highlight the insanity of wokeness. We do not appreciate being filmed for this. Oh, he, he's not filmed. He identifies as a camera. <laughs> we just, yeah, we just kind of, I'm glad it's funny to you. It's just very confusing. My name is Lindsey Graham and I am a cat. Meow, meow. I'm not a woman dressed as a cat. I am a cat. By show of hands, I'm curious, uh, how many of you believe and confess that I'm a cat? No one. You are right. Why? Because you are not stupid and these children are not stupid. One look at me and you know this to be true. I am a woman posing as a cat. You may also think correctly that if I truly believe I'm a cat, I have a mental disorder. If I suffer from a mental disorder, and if I'm unable to discern reality, am I safe to be around children? Would you put me in charge of making critical decisions about the safety and well-being of children and about the direction of their education when I cannot even discern truth from fiction? No tail, whiskers, or outfit makes me a cat. Just like no lipstick, high heels, or long hair makes him a woman. If you were to address me as a cat right now, it's as ridiculous as when you say Miss Bixler and a grown man's voice comes thundering. Now, seeing how many self-identifying cats and dogs are roaming around in schools these days, it seems this message isn't getting out to enough people. Meanwhile, for the first clip, using their own crazy logic against them will never not be funny. But it's worrying times when grown adults will actually believe someone identifies as a camera. 
And moving right along, our next clip reminds us that standing up to wokeness also requires exposing those doing wrong. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and only ladies and gentlemen it is and shall always be. I am an 18-year-old high school student and wanted to take this time to bring to your attention the current issue with biological men claiming they are women entitled to use women's spaces. There was an incident within our district that occurred recently regarding a transgender woman who really is a biological man having an altercation with a young woman at MLK High School. This man is and has been using the women's restroom and locker room. Firstly, why are we affirming the mental confusion of this boy and putting the safety of women in jeopardy by allowing mentally confused men to use the women's spaces? Of course, any male who claims he is a woman will accept it. But what about the women? What about the true girls like myself who are female down to our DNA? Why don't we ever get a say in whether or not we are comfortable with this? The truth is, we aren't. The majority of us aren't, and yet nothing has been done to protect the safety of these women. So please do something about it. Thank you. Now it's quite telling when an 18-year-old has more common sense and maturity than the adults running our education system. You shouldn't need an 18-year-old to explain basic biology and fight for her and her classmates' rights to privacy and safety. Matt Walsh is also someone who's not afraid to explain biology in a way that even crazy wokies can understand. Take a listen. We can't say anything at all about how many legs a person has. Who knows? They could have, they could be a centipede. You know, they could have, a, they could have a hundred legs. No, we know human beings have two legs. If a human is born without two legs, something went wrong. They were supposed to have that second leg. Something went wrong. If you, if you, if you meet a person on the street who only has one leg, maybe, maybe they had an accident. Maybe they were in war. Maybe, maybe something. You know, maybe they were in a car accident. Maybe they had cancer. A leg was cut off. But you know that something went wrong because of the, by their nature, they're supposed to have two legs. Same thing for a woman. A woman by her nature can get pregnant. A man by his nature never can. So if you meet a woman of childbearing age, say she's 28 years old, and she can't get pregnant, you know automatically that something has gone wrong. And she can go to the doctor and find out what that thing is, even if they can't fix it. So that proves that women by their nature can get pregnant because the simple fact that she can't shows you that there is something wrong. This is what is known as the exception that proves the rule. Whereas if a male with a penis can't get pregnant, no doctor on earth is going to run tests to see what's wrong with it. Because they already know it's that he's a male and there's only male and female, those who can get pregnant and those who can't. Now again, these types of explanations are normally meant for children. The fact we have to direct these to grown adults is tragic. And while objective realities should never be labelled controversial or even censored, it's censorship that Elon Musk argues against in our penultimate clip. We don't agree on this. Yes, you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship at yes, all. Yes, you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there is, I think there... You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship... You want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. And, and I think that... Want censorship. And, I, and I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours and you are a person who, of consequence to the world with what you do, that there is a certain responsibility that goes along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world. And I, I think that's important. You don't see that responsibility. Um, I think the, we have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law. Um, and if people want the law changed, they should talk to, the elector, talk to their elected representative and get the law changed. And then we will adhere to the law. Okay. But if you want us to go beyond the law, that is, that is uh, us deciding to be censors. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. And freedom of speech only is relevant when people you don't like say things you don't like. Otherwise, it has no meaning. Now, let me know what you guys think in the comments. In my opinion, speech that incites violence will get you arrested, like yelling fire in a crowd or shouting bomb on an airplane. And I'm not against that. But as far as political censorship that looks to silence people with a different opinion, if it's not putting anyone in danger then that's not something I'd think we should ever allow to be policed. But finally, we wrap up today with one man's powerful message that sums up how we should view woke culture. I am so tired of talking about woke culture because one of the tenets of wokeness is, of course, that your feelings matter more than the truth. And the only thing that wokeness has to offer in exchange is to brainwash bright young minds like you to believe that you are victims to believe that you have no agency, to believe that what you must do to improve the world is to complain, is to protest, is to throw soup on paintings. 
We said on this side of the house, because we know that the way to improve the world is to work, is to create, it is to build. And the problem with woke culture is that it's trained too many young minds like yours to forget about that. Now, if you were to ask yourself what woke ideology has contributed to the world, I would say it's made the world a more inclusive place. But somewhere along the line, we lost our minds and went too far. Because I do think we've reached a point where everyone sees themselves as victims. Everyone feels helpless to their mental struggles. And people have even thrown away basic knowledge about the world and are willing to believe anything the woke ideology tells them. That's why it's so important that we have people willing to stand up for what's right. Whether it's refusing to let others police your language and how you speak, or exposing those that are literally putting others in danger, there are plenty of ways in our everyday lives that we can stick up for what we believe in. Now last month, the governor of Idaho signed a bill that essentially bars teachers and other public employees from referring to a student by a name or pronoun that doesn't align with their birth sex, unless the teacher has parental consent. It also gives teachers the right to sue their district for refusing to use a transgender student's preferred name or pronoun. In a nutshell, it's a move to basically protect teachers' free speech and ensure they aren't forced to use a student's preferred pronouns. Now, this has obviously stirred up a lot of controversy over the last few weeks, but if you think about how many teachers out there have faced losing their job or even legal action over not submitting to their students' demands over pronouns, it's a step that had to be taken. And again, I'm perfectly happy if the student, parent and teacher are all in agreement to use different pronouns. But if not, it makes no sense to me that a teacher can be forced to use specific language based on their student's chosen gender identity. Then again, do let me know in the comments if you feel strongly otherwise. As always, thanks for supporting this channel and I'll see you all next week.